culture. So for instance, a Muslim wearing a headscarf is not egregious because Christians wear headscarves. So of course a Muslim can wear a headscarf. But wearing a niqab or wearing a burqa is an egregious offense to our culture. The Crusader states had a population that was 30% Muslim and they didn't have any problems. The reason why they didn't have problems with their local Muslim community is because any attempt by that local Muslim community to establish Sharia law would have been dealt with. We, we all agree that it shouldn't, it shouldn't be oppression, but nor should it be so weak that those that, that refuse to integrate just to get to do whatever they want. That, that's the problem with what's happening in the UK. It's what's happening in Western Europe is we are allowing certain populations to do whatever they want. The majority of the Muslims in this park in this park, want us to establish Sharia law. I think all of the Muslims in this country that want to establish Sharia law, all of them, without exception, need to be deported. Sorry? Yeah. I'm sorry, there's so much noise, I can't hear you. And then you jumped on into uh, Did you start again from the beginning? Okay, so we spoke about Suella Breverman, right? You made you started with, you started your, your station. Suella Breverman, yes. Suella yeah. and the article regarding about her speech of the United Nations. Yes. And then I think you touched on Article 14 of the International Convention of Human Rights, which deals with, uh, with uh, refugees. Yes. But if you go back to Article 13 yep. of the Convention, it says that anyone has the right to leave his state or to leave his country to come to his own country. Yeah. So when it comes to immigration, we have to, have to start in Article 13 even before we jump to, to, to a refugee. Because a refugee has a reason to leave his country which is war and, and so on. Yeah. But if you go back to Article 13, there is no requirement for anyone to be under distress to leave their country, to go in the other country, to come back to his own country. That's a really good point. Yeah. And I think it actually strengthens the whole argument. Yeah. Could you want to stand here and talk about it? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So I, I think it strengthens the whole argument, which is that this this convention is not fit for purpose. Because as you've just rightly pointed out, it states that you don't even have to be persecuted. You have the right to leave, right? But this is the problem, is that we've got uncontrolled, unfiltered immigration. And it is harming British society. It's harming European society. I'll give you an example. In France, in France, they've seen gangs, gangs of immigrants running around in tans having their little gang war with one another, carrying armed weapons, Kalashnikovs and assault rifles. We've got problems with immigrate, immigrate communities uh, that have not properly integrated into the UK. So for example, uh, Muslim Pakistanis only make up 4% of the UK population, but they make up 15% of our prison population. They do, the, the reason for that is because they've never been encouraged to integrate, and so because they've never, so they've never, exactly, they've never been encouraged to integrate and because they've had nothing to, and that's not their fault, we've never given them anything to integrate into. And because of that, and because they haven't integrated, they end up being at the bottom of the pile in terms of getting jobs, in terms of achievement, in terms of education. Um, and then a lot of them resort to crime. Th that's, all very, that's all true. You're absolutely right in what you say. But the problem that I have is with the law. Because it seems that there is a, like you were saying, an argument against the International Confession of Human Rights that is written today because the British government is saying that it's not fit for purpose. Yes. Well, but it is an international convention which means that every single country that is part of the United Nations has to abide by it. Yes. You're and, right. And it is an argument that we're not hearing from anyone else in the world stage apart from the United Kingdom. Now we've had a few years before, which was uh, Brexit, right? Yeah. Which was an attempt to mitigate the problem of uh, of immigration because it was being said at the time yep. that it was the immigration from the EU that was causing uh, problems in the economy. Yeah. Now we've uh, kind of closed that that yep. the, that that chapter. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. And now the argument now it's it's, it's uh, has uh, gone from that to international convention on human rights to yes. the refugee convention. Yes. But do you think 
uh, because in, ma in many in many uh, cases uh, it was um, it's very utopia like what you try to suggest because you went on to uh, a, a basis a base uh, a base of the law which is, is, should stand from Christianity. Yes, to be sure, which we should all be uh, uh, you know if we are in the UK, we should all have to abide by the same laws and regulations. Is that a bad idea? It, I I don't think that it is at all. But then you have a problem, which is that if we are all subject to the same law, yes. a refugee who comes to this country and commits a crime, then he's subject to be deported. However, someone who was born here who commits the same crime doesn't have anywhere to be deported. Right, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Yes, of course. Because my whole argument, which I made very clear, was that even someone who was native born, right? Even someone who was native born, if they sought to undermine the Commonwealth and the peace of the nation by living by other values, or other traditions or seeking to establish other legal customs in the land they also should be kicked out now let me let, yeah, 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 yeah. where they get where they go when they flee our country is not my concern the reality is everyone should know the law and if they don't know the law if they won't sorry everyone should be in, encouraged to integrate and those that refuse should be kicked out where they run to is their own problem they shouldn't have broke the law they should not have broke the law I don't, I'm, I'm saying that we've got a problem in this country in that we are taking in masses and masses of people that don't share our values, don't share our outlook, don't share our legal tradition, don't share our historical customs that we've built up over time, and it's damaging to our society, right? Now, Christianity forbids me from being xenophobic. I can't turn around and say Britain is for the white people only. Can't do that. But what the bible and the christian faith does allow me to do is say yes you're welcome whoever you are right but if you come here you come here because you want to be more like us we're not going to move an inch towards you we're not changing that damn thing about who we are you're going to learn our language you're going to learn to like our food you're going to learn to as, uh, keep with our legal tradition you're going to keep our constitution you're going to establish our legal precedents and any attempt to change them by you will be looked upon as, as like, and when I say any, what I mean is, I don't mean in the sense of cooking curry. Like, I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, for instance, the majority of the Muslims in this park, in this park, want us to establish Sharia law. I think all of the Muslims in this country that want to establish Sharia law, all of them, without exception, need to be deported all of them and anyone who was born here who agrees with that should be deported any jew let me i just want to be consistent any jew who wants to go to a court of rabbis rather than to a british court needs to be deported with like it's one legal system for everybody and we all live under the same law. Yeah, but then you have, a, I think then you have a bit of a problem. Go on. Because it is a, you, you are placing a burden yeah. upon the foreign. Yes, you're, you're right. Then you're not placing upon the, the, the indigenous. Yeah, absolutely right. That is exactly what I'm yes. doing. So th there is no equal treatment of the law there in that, case, in, no, in that sense. One because, second. Because, yeah, go on. Uh, we've seen uh, through, okay, let's say King George VIII, because it's the yeah. one first introduced which led to the United Kingdom, uh, well, abandoned Catholicism in a way. No, that's not true anyway, but go well, on. He, he, he deviated from the Catholic Church and he founded the. Uh, the, the, uh, the uh, yeah, the but Church Christianity Kingdom. was here in the first century. Yeah, so I'm talking about Catholicism in the Church of England. Go on, what's your point? Yeah. So he, let's not get caught up in the ministry. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, the Church of England in, 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 into England, right? So, so from that time until today, we've seen a paganization of the English of the English British tradition. Yes. That the British people themselves, the native, the locals from here, have been distancing themselves from, from, from the values yes. and from their from, from their own religion. Yes, absolutely. So when I say that you are placing a heavier burden upon the foreign, that you are not placing upon the upon the local. So there is no equality of the law. No, let me let me address that point, right? Firstly, you are correct. I am saying that if you choose to come to this country, that you have accepted that you have chose Britain. Britain didn't choose you. You came here because you wanted to, we didn't ask you to, right? So the responsibility is on the immigrant to integrate. It is not, let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. The responsibility is on the immigrant to integrate. It is not on the responsibility of the state to make, to, to, to change ourselves for them, right? 
you're making a choice to come to the UK, you integrate. No, I'm not talking about you, I'm, I'm speaking yeah, generically, speaking, yeah. right? Now, what I'm offering is an alternative. I recognize what you're saying, yeah. that the reality is Britain has gone a long way from its Christian roots. And, and what I'm trying to argue is basically this, the reason why the UK has this problem that we are currently dealing with right now is because the Liberals have filled out the horizons of their ideology. We have used, the, the Liberals have used up the entirety of the resources that their ideology allows them to do to fix any problem. And now they've got problems that their ideology can't answer. So what I'm offering to the British people is a solution to the problem of liberalism, which is a, a return to a robust, strong Christianity, which teaches against xenophobia, that says that the alien is welcome amongst us, that they will be treated like the native born, and that we will all live under the same law, and that anyone, whether they were born here or not, who doesn't support actively that worldview can be made to leave. Now, I, I'm talking in, in an egregious sense. Like I said, I'm not talking about in little minor ways, but I'm talking in a way that is egregious to the culture. So for instance, a Muslim wearing a headscarf is not egregious because Christians wear headscarves. So of course a Muslim can wear a headscarf, but wearing a niqab or wearing a burqa is an egregious offense to our culture. And so that should be banned. Right? Animal sacrifice before eating is an egregious offence to British culture. You either become vegan or you eat non-ritually slaughtered meat. That includes Jews. So we get rid of kosher and we get rid of halal. And any other kind of ritual killing for one, whatever religion it belongs to. You eat the British meat slaughtered the British way, which is not religious. Yeah, and we stun animals. If you don't like stunned animals, tough. That's what we're doing, right? So it's only, it's only in egregious ways that I'm saying that there's no room. So I've got no problem with the idea of an Adan. If a Muslim wants to go, it's a call to prayer. If someone wants to go to the top of the minaret and, and shout like, come to mosque, they have every right to, but they don't get to do it from a megaphone. Why don't they get to do it from a megaphone? Because I can't shout into anyone else's home with a megaphone saying, believe in Jesus Christ, so neither should the Muslim. So it's about having a strong culture and being willing to impose that. And anyone who resists that should be forced That's, to leave. I see your point. But then you have two problems. What you say is that in all your preachings, the only effective path is being preached. And what you just said there is your opposing idea that there should be restrictions upon Muslims. Okay. No, I also referenced Jews as well. Yes, I, and I said anyone, even native born people. It's only in an effect against Muslims. No, you, you see, you didn't listen then. That's not, the, you need to pay more you attention. Said that everybody has to be subject to the law. There should be no, no exceptions. There were some exceptions. Yes, yeah, so non egregious non exceptions. exceptions. So an example yeah, would be yeah, but an egregious. I was going to say, sorry to yeah, go on. Then you're not having two problems because you're going to have to go back to the International Convention on Human Rights, which this is the starting point of the conversation. Yeah. Yes. Which is the international law. Yeah. Because as I see it, international law is liberal. Because if international law is giving. Um, citizens of anyone of anywhere in the world yes, yes. the ability to go anywhere they like yes then the law uh, the international law is liberal right and so the solution to that is, is that we stop being liberal yeah. is that we tear up the international agreement yeah. is that we have is that we have the courage and the conviction within ourselves to turn around to the well, let me finish to turn around to the international community and say we're not following your law we're not following your approach to law. We're not liberal. We think you're wrong. That's, a, that's perfectly right. But then you're also restricting the locals, the natives, yes. from abandoning their culture. Agreed. Because we, because, uh, because uh, human rights says that you have to write to follow whatever religion you like, etc. Et so you, 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 are, you are restricting the natives from changing their... their, their no, no, no. Religion. Hold on one second. So I wouldn't stop people from changing their religion. Yes, but then they would be uh, breaking the law. No, no, no. Hold on one second. No, no. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't stop people changing their religion. And the reason for that is because as Christians, we believe that you've got to own your own faith, 
right? And because we believe that faith is a matter of like you making a an elective choice that you choose, that means that there are people that abandon the faith all the time. It's acceptable within Christians for people to leave the religion. But hold on one second. What I'm saying is not about people changing. So like I said, I use the example of the Crusader states. The Crusader states had a population that was 30% Muslim and they didn't have any problems. The reason why they didn't have problems with their local Muslim community is because any attempt by that local Muslim community to establish Sharia law would have been dealt with. Of course. The reason why we are struggling with 4% in the UK, 10% in France, because there's no imposition of values. France right now is in a, a battle for its its very identity yeah because it's got no it's got yeah, because secular liberalism has no inner con it is a self-contradictory yeah, self id organization of yeah. the of the european yes culture that's been happening for centuries so the answer is a muscular christianity are you a christian brother uh, we, we, we've, uh, we've had that comment. I don't like to put labels on things. Forgive me. I, follow, I guess I do, obviously we've talked before. I do follow a Bohemic law and I do follow Judaic law and, right. and principles of living. And, yeah. And okay, culture, fair enough. So yeah. if you want to call that Christianity, fair play. I am, you know, as you can see, I'm an, I'm descended from Crusaders. <laughs> Are you? Yes, I am. Thanks be to God. Just, just, just to let you know. Yeah. I'm not that much. I'm not, not that alien to this culture. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Yeah. Because I agree with you that if you're going to go somewhere, we have to integrate. Yeah. But, but there should be some margin for us to be able to maintain. Some I agree. Of our I agree. Which you said this shouldn't be egregious. You know, this should, it should, it shouldn't. Uh, uh, interfere too much with, with, with the, with the life of the locals. It shouldn't morph into oppression of the it, 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 exactly. Sorry? It should but, morph but, into oppression of the I, I, as well. I also created the, not, not I created. But no, right, wait, 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 wait. We all agree that it shouldn't, it shouldn't be oppression, but nor should it be so weak that those that, that refuse to integrate just to get to do whatever they want. That, that's the problem with what's happening in the UK. It's what's happening in Western Europe is we are allowing certain populations to do whatever they want and that needs to stop and we can't do that while ever we keep continually buying into this liberal narrative with um, the history of muslim people in europe well, from the muslim world is that the first generation there was really no problems they were, they were that they did keep to mostly to their own culture. Yes. It was only with the second generation that they And the reason the reason why no, that I, I'm, I haven't finished. Yeah. Is that Are you a Christian? No, I'm a Muslim. Right. Is that there was because they were born into a Western culture that they had a family that was a yeah. um, Islamic culture in yeah. a sense. So there was a conflict within themselves. Yeah. Which sometimes manifested into Exactly, the but the thing is, the thing is, do you, for instance, as a, as a the problem isn't because they're in a in a culture; it's because of the conflict of a conflict. Yeah, and that conflict and, is and resolved by integrating those populations and yes. giving them something to integrate into. But how to integrate is to just let them be. Right. So, yeah. so let, let me let me just address yeah, this point yeah, yeah. because okay. because because as a Muslim. If, if you're truly a, if you're truly committed to Islam, you want to impose Sharia, you want to have Sharia law established here. Sharia law will turn me into a second-class citizen, and I don't think we should conscience. So Sharia law permits slavery. Sharia law permits child marriage. I don't think that we should give room to that ideology, and I don't think that we should allow that because those doctrines are egregious, that we should allow them to be preached. And therefore, those that, those that preach such doctrines should be dealt with by the state. Now, the, the point is, if you want to, the, 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 the problem you rightly identified arose by the fact that the second generation of Muslim immigrants didn't have anything really to attach themselves to that was strong, clear that they could embrace, and nor, and nor, and incidentally, nor did they encourage themselves to adopt anything. There was no expectation and no encouragement to do so, within or without. So everyone is to blame for the mess that we're in. I'm trying to offer a solution to the problem. Your turn, go on. Yeah, well, I, I see, uh, because uh, with, with, with swallow grabbing and statement, yeah. 
I see a bit of an hypocrisy going on in there because as I see it, the British culture is pushing a, uh, a uh, liberal agenda. International law is pushing an international agenda. Yes. So I think it's a bit, it's a bit uh, hypocritical for her to come out on the world stage and say, look, we have to abandon this liberal international policy of everybody like goes whatever they like because it's the same policy that European Union implements which is uh, open borders so how can how can the British government how can how can the late uh, I think it's uh, the conservatives come out on the world stage and say look we need to abolish the international law because uh, it's too liberal but then at home they are pushing liberal agendas yeah one one thing is for example uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the right for homosexuals to be married for example which is a liberal agenda and it's a liberal agenda that is, yeah. that is uh, 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 strongly uh, you know promoted in the British culture yes now I see uh, a conflict between that type, that type of uh, 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 that type of policy and Christianity because we know that from a Christian perspective there are some some acts that are that are abominable yes you're, okay? you're, you're absolutely right yeah there are some there are some acts that are abominable uh, yeah. uh, you know that that, that don't um, they don't mix much with, 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 with what's been happening. So there is an argument uh, from, from Suella Braverman, which is uh, the burden, the economic burden upon the country, upon, upon the host country from receiving all these immigrants. But then I ask, why is the reason, uh, why, why was the reason uh, that I think was after 1945 that they decided that they needed to come with an international law to, to protect refugees and then to update the law to say, okay, that people can leave their countries because in the UK, in Europe, the, the, uh, the effects of the Second World War were so devastating that they had to open their, their borders yep. to, to, to uh, allow uh, uh, migrants from the Caribbean yep. and other countries to come in to strengthen the economy. However, there was a bit of a problem, you know, of say the, uh, there was a, a lack of funding that perhaps happened during that time until now, which which was directed into integrating, uh, 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 better yeah, integrating exactly. so, those old people. Into, so, so, that into went, went, so a couple of points. Firstly, you're absolutely right. The British government is being hypocritical because yeah. on the one hand it wants to complain about internationalism but on the other hand it's pushing internationalism. What's the answer? Stop being internationalist. Like as Christians, as Christians we, we have a form of internationalism which is the church. Remember the, the, the Christian faith brings together people from every place on earth. Arabs, Japanese, Chinese, Nigerians, Ethiopians, Latinos, uh, Native Americans, we're all Indians, we're all brought together with Saxons, like in one church, yeah. right? And so I've got no problem with multi-ethnicity. I've not got no problem with multiculturalism. Christianity is expressed differently by different cultures. The thing that allows those Christians to get on with one another is because they had a similar base. Mm -hmm. They had a similar set of values and they had a similar outlook on life. And that's why after, after World War I, it was easy to absorb these displaced European populations because they all shared a common heritage, which meant that they had a generally common outlook anyway already, right? And it was only the racists that struggled, right? But, but the point is, that's not the issue that we face now. The issue that we face now is that we have invited en masse cultures alien to our own an alien in the sense that they have different values, a different outlook, a different set of doctrines uh, that, that are seeking, in some cases, and those are the ones that we must deal with, that are seeking actively to undermine and replace what we've got. Yes, but then what the, the opposing force... Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. But shouldn't they then be dealt with in the same vein as, people, as say, fascists, people who want a culture that is different from our own? And so, and fascists are usually like of the majority ethnic group. So, what you should do in that case is do it on an individual level so, instead of a yeah, so, national level on in terms of religion. So, again, you've not listened to the entirety of the conversation and you keep misunderstanding the conversation. So, I do agree that fascists should be dealt with in the same way as Islamists. Islamists and fascists both should be crushed by the state. Islamists 
and, and Nazis should both be crushed by the state. Islamists, no, the whole group, Islamists and communists should be crushed. Not just individuals, but their networks, their institutions. That's not what no, 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 and, and what, and what and I'm saying, no, not on an individual basis, no, on a collective basis. All Islamist networks, all Nazi networks, all communist networks should be actively crushed by the state. That's not what I meant by individual. Go on, you, you. But, but those groups are not internationalists. Because Which ones? The communists the ones are? Uh, Islamists the, are? The, the, the Nazis in, yeah, the Nazis yeah, are. Well, not and the fascists are. They are not internationalists. Yes. And social uh, and uh, and and the, um, and the, uh, the the policy that we have, the national policy that we have, is liberal. Mm. Liberal then would mean internationalist, but you said that you're not an internationalist. You're more of a. More I'm Catholic. A, okay, but 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 that doesn't. It's not a political. With a statement. small C. No, it is. That's the point. Uh, but is it, it a made, internationalist it, it, one or a, so, or a socialist one? So so. Or a nationalist. Do you want me to answer that? Yeah. Go ahead. So so the thing is, what I'm trying to say is, the problem, the the, the current paradigm that we've got is clearly not working, right? The the paradigm that we have is is liberal internationalism is failing because it's trying to do the impossible it's essentially saying that the western world can be the lifeboat of the entire world that is not going to work yeah, but uh, let me finish right so that's the problem liberal internationalism i'm not running to the other extreme of say let's all get in bed with the nazis the fascists and the xenophobes because they also are condemned by my faith what we must do is have a filter on immigration that says, look, everyone in principle is welcome, but we are going to filter and we're going to say, look, we're going to favor people that are already in line with right, our own values, our own customs. So if you're a Lebanese Christian, you're going to be treated more favorably by our immigration system than a Lebanese Muslim, because you're bringing with you values that are already native. Right now, if you're a Lebanese Muslim, but you clearly demonstrate that you really want to do be British and adopt our values, even if you stay Muslim, you're welcome. But if you're a Lebanese Islamist, you're out. Yeah, but then, but then um, the argument, the economic argument, kind of falls a little bit. Because explain reason, how, because I don't see. Because the, the, the reason why there was an international open border policy was because of the, of, of, of an economic uh, um, uh, degradation of. of of Europe. So if you if you, if you if you if you if you be, if you try to become very selective on the people that you get, maybe you're not going to get the best pool of people in order to come in. Because if you look up in the world, one of I think what the benefits of of of, uh, of, of the war was for many countries to become independent from 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 colonialism, and and uh, colonialism. And I, I blame a bit Russia for a type of colonialism that was that was not occupational but ideological, because they they uh, pushed this idea that the religion was the opium of the people. So in a sense, many countries were many uh, uh, Soviet countries did not follow Christianity as much. So. The, uh, there is a, uh, there, there is a, uh, there is, I see that there is no, um, how can I say? I'm not, I'm, just connect the dots for me, because I'm still not seeing how this uh, impacts my argument at all. Well, uh, it, it doesn't. Okay, I'm not, right. I'm not saying it does, and I do agree with many things that you say. But we spoke about internationalism and, 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 and the ideology that pushes uh, internationalism. Yeah, which is, a, which is, a, is liberalism. So the answer is to stop being liberal. Yes, and to be then, Christian. No, yeah, okay, however, however, we've seen an attack on the Christianity. <laughs> yes. And also, uh, the, 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 uh, the natives, the, the Europeans, have been deviating from, from Christianity. So you so don't what, have what? an opposing force to this wave of right. So, so let, me, let, me, let, me re let me reply to that, because the, uh, the opposing force has to come from the church. Christians need to organize themselves so that they become the opposing force to liberalism. Christians, when they do organize themselves as the opposing force to liberalism, will find that conservatives and those of that ilk will start to join themselves onto the church. And as they do so, many of them will become Christian, though not all. And then as the church continues to oppose liberalism, um, hopefully 
uh, from a clear, well-articulated Christian position, even liberal Christians will be drawn closer to Christ. Because when we start calling out liberalism as the error and the heresy that it is, then it ends up that, that liberal Christians, their conscience will be pricked and those that really love Jesus will move away from liberalism themselves. So, so, you, so, you, so uh, are you uh, arguing that Swell of Braverman that is right in saying that we should abolish Article 13 and Article 14 of the International I, I am saying, Rights? I am saying that Suella Braverman, sorry, Suella, Suella, I'm saying, yeah, I'm saying that Suella Braverman is right to say that this treaty is not fit for purpose, but as you've rightly pointed out, if you're a liberal, you can't come up with an, you, you can't get away from your liberalism. Yeah. So the, the thing is, she's identified the right, she's identified the right problem, but she hasn't got the right solution. The she right solution, where well, she can't. Oh, you want a more militant, Stop complaining. More militant Christianity. There you go. A, a second crusade. You get it. Of. So you want, we want a more militant Christianity that believes that it is in a holy campaign to Christianize the world. But then, but then, so all of Raverman is shooting herself in the foot because you are appealing for more Christianity, but she's appealing for more, for more liberalism. Well, so I'm not saying Suella Braverman's a Christian. She's not a Christian. She's not a Christian. I'm, so at no point has my argument been based on Suella Braverman's Christianity. So that's not an argument. Yeah. It's not an argument. Yes, but, but, but what, I'm, what I'm having a bit of difficulty is... With Can I suggest, I think your problem is that you're not connecting the dot, which is this. Christians are not British. Christians are not liberal. But Britain used to be Christian. Yeah. So if we're going to, I'm offering an alternative to the British people. I am saying, British people, the reason why you've got all these problems that you're suffering from is because of liberalism. The answer is not more liberalism or a tweaked liberalism or an attuned liberalism. The answer is get rid of liberalism, replace it with Christianity. Christian political thought is wh where you're, what you're missing. That's the dot is we need to think politically as Christians. But let, let, let me go back to equality of the law and the burdens that are placed on persons which are born here and the persons who come here. Yeah, because which is the same. Because can you condemn the people who are foreign, who come to this country and decide to follow a more liberal approach to British culture rather than a Christian one? Because in your view... You've missed my point. You've missed my point. I'm saying, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to defend liberal culture. I'm saying the way that Britain has gone wrong is by the adoption of liberalism. So I'm not saying that the solution is any kind of liberalism. I'm saying that the solution is let's get rid of liberalism in its entirety. From beginning to end, let's just drop the whole failed experiment. We've tried it for 300 years. It's led to disaster. Let's now return to a muscular Christianity. But if that happens, if let's say tomorrow the United Kingdom decides to abolish the International Convention on Human Rights, yeah. what will replace it? It's not going to be a more militant Christianity. No, so what but, will replace it? But the, point is, the point is, brother, we, well, at least me, because I don't know where you stand, but as a Christian, we as Christians have got to make an argument to the British people that actually we don't have to keep trudging down this erroneous road that we can go in a different direction. So I'm not saying that, um, well, let's click our magical fingers and, and, and just, just get rid of the international agreement. I'm saying that we as Christians need to offer a strong alternative to liberalism that people will then adopt. And then when we, as more and more Christians, take on a muscular Christianity and more and more former Christians or non-Christians adopt that muscular Christianity, we will then be in a position to say to the world, we're tearing up your international agreement and we're going to replace it with this. Immigrants are still welcome, but you're welcome on our terms. Firstly, we are going to filter. We're going to favour Christian immigrants. Secondly, you can still come if you're not a Christian, but you're coming because you've chosen to be British. And so you, what you're going to do is you're going to integrate into our existing society and in any egregious way in which your home culture and our culture disagree, you're the ones that accept the, 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 the change, in not a, us. In an economics uh, perspective, let's say 
Yes, tomorrow the uh, United Kingdom decides to leave the International Convention of Human Rights. Don't you think that that would isolate Britain even more than it is already, especially after uh, you know, leaving the European Union? Yeah. And don't you think that uh, that would hurt economically, that would hurt the United Kingdom even more? Yeah. Because it will diminish considerably all the countries that they can do business with, unless by some, by some miracle. Yeah. So the, so, so the, the, the British people, structure. the British people need to ask themselves this question. Is there some British identity worth saving? If the answer to that question is no, it's all about economics, then yeah, please keep doing the international liberal thing. If your entire world is decided by just economic questions, then you're right, my, what I'm suggesting is a disaster, right? But if you, uh, if you think that there is something more important, if you think that there is something more important than than simple economic factors and questions then and you agree with me that a culture and a tradition and, a, and an identity is worth keeping then we've got to find a way to keep it because liberal internationalism is destroying it and I think questions about our culture and our identity are more important than questions of economic I voted Brexit knowing that Brexit would probably hurt the British economy but I thought that national sovereignty was more important than economic questions. Yes, but then uh, you see what's happening in African countries now. Let's start wrapping this up, Rob. Okay, well, I think, I think we've covered a lot. I don't want yeah. to take much of your time. I didn't want to, uh, I, I didn't want, I didn't want, I didn't come to argue against you. No, I know, that's so fine. Just to share some kind of yeah, ideas. Yeah, yeah, no, so, so let's do this last thought. What's your last thought on this? That, the, well, the one that you were going to articulate. Well, uh, I think that uh, abolishing the international convention of human rights it's it's a no go it won't it, it, won't, it will not provide the economic benefits uh, that the argument for it is trying to make because the reason why Swallow Brother has come up and said that we need to abolish this is because they say that they that, that the mass immigration is hurting the British economy secondly the culture but right. time will tell so so you absolutely in one sense she is right you know, we're spending, I think, I can't remember what the exact figure is, one billion or four billion on <laughs> just housing immigrants. Like, whatever the number is, it's massive. That, that, that is hurting the economy because that money could have been spent elsewhere per annum, right? So that is a deficit to the economy. And not allowing those migrants to work, because please know, I actually said that an immigrant, a refugee, should have the right to work because I said that the principle of Christian law is everybody lives on an, uh, under exactly the same laws. So I'm actually saying, along with my idea that we should filter hard and we should give a culture that, that, um, that, that allows people to integrate and we should expect people to integrate and we should deal with people that don't, along with that, I'm actually arguing for more rights for refugees and immigrants than they currently have at the moment. Now, you're right, Breverman's, Breverman is, is trying, if she's trying to frame the whole argument in economics, she's going to lose. Because economics comes down to GDP and GDP comes down to population, right? And we wouldn't need to import a population if we didn't abort a population. And abortion and contraception is why we need mass immigration. So all of you conservatives that are on one hand whinging and complaining about mass immigration, but you're supporters of abortion and contraception, yeah. you're part of the problem. But I'm saying that there are questions more important than economics. My argument is based on the idea that there's something more important than economics. I don't disagree with that. I also, I'll just to finalize, I also take a more, uh, more of a nationalist, uh, Christian nationalist yeah. uh, side of things rather than an internationalist one. Yeah. However, I do agree that we need to have bilateral agreements with other countries and we need to have the same understanding yeah. to do business with each other because I don't agree with funding, uh, giving guns to Saudi Arabia to go and shoot. Yeah. And exactly. And so, exactly. So kind of but but, but, just, anyway, just it was... It was really nice speaking with you, brother. Here's a gift. I always, uh, anyone who has a nice conversation with me gets a gift. Thank you. I'll read it. Maybe you'll uh, come and have a chat. All have right. Talk about talk us about it again. Okay. Uh, what's your name, bro? Uh, Livingston. 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 So Livingston came with some intelligent arguments. Do you want to grab a coffee in a second? Yeah, we we'll go grab a cup of tea. You can come with us. Yeah, on or off camera. On or off camera. Uh, on or off camera? Off. 
Right, well, let's go over there then. So, so basically, this brother, this brother came to ask an intelligent question and, and came to have an intelligent conversation about the question of immigration and refugee status. Now, notice, at no point did he play the race card. Right, which just goes to show that we can have intelligent conversations about this issue. And we need to open up this conversation to an intelligent discourse because everyone recognises that we've got problems. I work with people in this park who are immigrants and some I know are refugees. I work with people of every ethnicity. I've got no problem with it. But the point is, the way, the way that we're going is, is, is not working, it's heading for disaster. Like Civil strife, like Sweden, like France, like the Netherlands. And I'm offering into that public debate a Christian alternative to the liberal failure, to the conservative incompetence, to the socialist internationalist and to the xenophobic Nazi. They've all contributed what are their answers to the problem. I'm contributing something better. The Christian answer, which is that we have a strong, we cultivate and create a strong culture, a strong set of laws, a strong constitutional body, a strong identity, and we filter based on who contributes positively to that strong identity. Those that want to come but not take it on completely can do, so long as they don't offend it in an egregious way. And where they do, they should be made to leave. And anyone who commits themselves, even if they're born in this country, should be made to leave. And I'm saying that immigrants and refugees should have exactly the same rights as British citizens from day one, along with the condition that they integrate. That is the biblical perspective that I've laid out for you. The bishops of the Church of England only want to give one part of that perspective, which is let's be all lovey-dovey to the refugees and the immigrants, but that is not the full biblical perspective. It's that they, are, they live under and are expected to live under the laws of the land and have the same expectations as the natives. The problem in the UK is we've lowered the bar. The solution is we need to raise the bar. Being British is a, is a gift. It is not a right. Okay. How are you doing? Good.